Hello everybody. I am so happy that once again you chose to join us for our Thursday Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come once again to study your word, asking as always that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive you afresh. In Christ's name, for his sake, amen. So we are still on article number 11, the perseverance of saints. Our author writes, we believe that such only are real believers as endure until the end, that their persevering attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors, that a special providence watches over their welfare, and that they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. <clears throat> and so we continue with John the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32, which reads, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And our focus continues to be on the latter part, and the truth shall set you free. And our last freedom uh, that we've been discussing is found in Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 39. It's freedom from fear. And it reads, and this is the NIV version, once again it's lengthy, but um, hang in there. Uh, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ died, Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life? is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so the whole of chapter 8 of Romans speaks of freedoms uh, that, we are, that we as believers have through Jesus Christ. In fact, one of the many themes of the book of Romans is Christian freedoms. These freedoms are through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives life. He pulls our minds to spiritual things. The Spirit of God gives life to my spirit. He gives me power to mortify the deeds of the flesh. It is through the Spirit that we are not condemned. It is through the Spirit that we are able to defeat the flesh. It is through the Spirit that we are freed from discouragement and frustration. Based on what the Spirit has done and is doing for believers, Paul, in verses 31 through 36, goes through a, a question and answer session, if you will. He, he's hammering the point home that those who love God and are called by him will definitely be free from the bondage and corruption of this life. And so in verse 35, Paul asks the question, who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
And, and then he spends the remainder of the chapter answering that question. He, he starts his answer with a question, in fact, pointing out some experiences that when we face them, we often think is because God does not love us or that we have done some big sin to cause God to turn his back on us. But Paul wants to change that mindset. He asks, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword those are the things, some of the things, that we face as believers. Tribulations is to undergo struggle. It's trials and temptations and sufferings and affliction. Distress is to suffer anguish, agony. It's, it's not knowing uh, which way to turn or what to do. Persecution is to be abused, mistreated, harassed, ha attacked, or injured. And then famine, now, that may be one that the majority of us don't deal with. We generally have too much food. But famine is to have no food, to be starving, and to have no way to secure food. And then nakedness, well, that's another one of those that most of us don't deal with. Nakedness is to be stripped of all clothes and earthly comfort, having all earthly possessions taken away. And then peril is to be exposed to the most severe risk, to be confronted with the most terrible of dangers. Uh, to your body, to your mind, to your soul, to your property, to your family, and, and to your loved ones. And, and then sword is simply to be killed. Trouble has a way of spilling over in every area of our lives. And oftentimes the severity of it will cause us to think that God is not with us. We, we sometimes cry out like Job, Lord, where are you? I, I can hear Paul shouting the answer to whether or not uh, we can be separated from God. I can hear him shouting the answer, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What a strange thing to say. In the midst of the hardest times in my life, I am more than a conqueror. When, when I'm feeling my lowest, I am more than a conqueror. That tells me that my circumstances is not evidence that God does not love me. My circumstances is not evidence of defeat. God loves us no matter what the circumstances may say. To be more than conquerors means that I will be victorious in a great way. No matter the circumstances and no matter the severity of the circumstance, Christ will carry us through it and in the midst give us strength and encouragement through the Holy Spirit. We cannot lose. We are more than conquerors. Then as if Paul is hitting hitting this thing from from another angle by way of a testimony in verse 38 and 39 the king james version says uh paul says for i am persuaded uh in, in other words he's going through some stuff and, and the stuff that he's going through he's been persuaded he said for i am persuaded neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so Paul says, 
Once we have been justified by faith, who is there? What power is there that can separate me from the love of Christ? Then Paul gives an answer that is so clear that, that not a doubt, not a question is left. He, he kind of settles the issue in, in his next, he says, he could have just stopped at neither death nor life can separate us. I mean, who can think of anything that is neither death or life? But, but Paul doesn't stop there. He wants to settle the issue to let us know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So he goes even farther by saying, no unseen powers neither angels, nor principalities, nor powers. When Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated principalities and powers, which is all the host of evil led by Satan. So, so no amount of evil can separate us from Christ. Then he says, neither things present nor things to come. Y'all, you know, there is nothing that we as a believer might ever go through which is neither a thing present or a thing to come. Everything I go through is either right now, which is present, or is something to come in my future, which is things to come. To, to, to get the great thing, rather, is that none of it will be so bad that it will separate me from Jesus Christ. And as if that's not enough, Paul goes on. It's as though Paul is being extra careful to cover all the bases. He, he says, neither height nor death, meaning nothing in heaven, nothing in hell. Then he says, nor any other creature or created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Y'all, as believers, we are safe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I call security. We are secure from every angle, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you slice it, no matter how you dice it, we are secure. We have no reason to fear the past, the present, or even the future. God is for us. The proof is that he gave his son. The son is for us. The proof is that he gave his life. And the Holy Spirit is for us. And the proof is that he's keeping us. And he's bringing us into oneness with the Father. As believers, we can enter each day, each problem, each trial, each tribulation, each good day, each bad day, knowing that God is for us and that he is working all things out for our good. Even if that means I must experience some trials in order to receive that good. Because sometimes I don't I can't receive the good until after the trial. So our security is in the fact that Christ died for us. If when we were sinners, God gave us his best, now that we are his children, will he not give us all that we need? Whenever we are blinded by our circumstances, we should, be, we should remind ourselves my circumstances does not prove nor disapprove or dis, disprove that God loves me. It was Calvary where, he, where his love was shown. And God deals with us on the basis of Calvary's grace. God has justified us. He has declared us righteous. Satan would like to accuse us, but we stand righteous in Christ Jesus. 
We stand covered by his blood. As believers, our righteousness will never change. Even though in this life, every day sometimes bring new challenges, new problems, new disappointments, new discouragement, new everything. But things, it, it's like things are constantly changing. But our justification, our imputed righteousness will never change. Even though we sometimes accuse ourselves and other folk may accuse us, God will never accuse us. Jesus has already paid the penalty and we are secure in him. We are secure and have no reason to fear because Christ intercedes for us. The same Savior who died for us is now interceding for us. As our high priest, he gives us the grace we need to overcome temptations and defeat the enemy. And finally, our security lies in the fact that Christ loves us. Even when we fail, even when we yield to some temptation or trial, that does not change Christ's love for us. There, so there is no reason for us to fear because Jesus Christ loves us and gives us the victory. That is not an if-then statement, meaning if you do this, then God will do that. This is one of the few things that we really can name it and claim it because we are in Christ. Nothing can separate us from his love. That you can name and you can claim. We are free from judgment because Christ died for us. We have his righteousness. We are free from defeat because Christ lives in us by his spirit and we share his life. We are free from discouragement because Christ is coming back for us and we shall glory, share his glory. We are free from fear because Christ intercedes for us and we cannot be separated from his love. So we have no condemnation, no obligation to the flesh, no frustration, no separation, that, loved ones, is freedom. And Paul asks the question, and, 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 and so do I, ask the question, if God be for us, who can be against us? And with that, we are finished with our study of article number 11, the perseverance of saints. Join us next time as we begin article number 12 the harmony of the law and the gospel. Until then, bye-bye, stay safe, love you.